Hello guys, this is Sparks, and I've got a little something something for you today. Um, this is um, a Minecraft version of Conway's Game of Life, uh, which is, no, not that Game of Life. It's, uh, it's a game created by uh, a, a guy called Conway. I've forgotten his name. He was a maths professor, um, and he came up with four simple rules which allow you to create very complex behavior. This shape you see right here is called a glider. It's almost well known as a glider. Uh, I can use my mushroom egg to, to clear it away. Um, but basically, you can take these four rules and you can get very, very complex behaviors out of it, which I think is pretty awesome. So, a white square is re representative of a live cell, and this is simulating life in its simplest sense. So, any live cell with um, fewer than two neighbors will die. So, this cell would die in the next iteration. If I hover over the um, emerald block there, you can see that it's just vanished. If I put two together like this, they won't be enough to keep each other alive and they'll vanish. But as soon as you've got three they will be able to survive. You can see it's doing a little oscillating thing here. Uh, the reason for this is because if a cell um, has uh, two or three neighbors, then it will live on. So this cell here has two neighbors. This cell here has only got one, so it dies. Uh, and the third rule is that any cell with more than three neighbors dies from overpopulation. So the first indication, the first one is like loneliness or underpopulation where there's not enough neighbors. The second one is a, is a perfect uh, living conditions where it's got two to three neighbors and if it's got more than three neighbors then it dies from overcrowding so um, you would see that in a in this cell right here would die if it had four neighbors like this um, it will it will just it'll vanish in the next iteration you can use the endermite egg to clear away these cells um, if a dead cell that's these black cells right here uh, has got exactly three live neighbors then it will come alive. So this cell right here has got three neighbors in its square around it, and this cell here has three neighbors. This one here only has one neighbor, so it'll die, and that's why you get this oscillating effect, where it basically just iterates through um, over and over again. It's kind of cool. Uh, I'm using the area effect clouds from um, 1.9 to do this, so uh, all of the live cells constantly have these um, area effect clouds sitting in them, and when, when you're hovering over the emerald block, it uh, triggers the redstone and you can see that it uh, is basically generating, uh, it checks all of the dead cells around it and works out how many neighbors it has. So this is the glider, but you can do some really cool things, like I can make this a much more complex interaction by putting two of these gliders slightly too close to each other so they run into each other, and then this happens. And you can see that the behaviors you get are they're predictable, um, and they um, they can make some really pretty patterns. So this is going to keep going for quite some time. I've watched this through. It takes a couple of minutes, and all of these cells are following those four basic rules, but you get some really, really pretty shapes from it. Um, so the redstone for this isn't actually too, too much. Uh, and also, while I was working on this, it came to my attention that Adrian Brightmore has done something similar to this uh, using um, villagers back uh, a little while ago. So I'll link I'll link to his video as well. It's um it looks a little different to mine. Uh, and also I'd like to thank Spider Robot Man. He came up with a really good solution for killing excess entities when doing these checks. So uh, I may quickly go over some of the redstone of how this works as well. Uh, it's a really nice pattern this one. It sort of you get these sort of little cells of equilibrium like this one here. This one here is like in a in a state of like it's just constantly, all of these are in perfect living conditions. But once something over here sort of spreads out, you'll see it sort of collide into these and then they'll start moving again. Um, so you can see it constantly sort of evolving and changing there. We've just had that collide together there and getting new shapes over here. It's, it's really cool to watch. Uh, it And it runs fairly well as well in Minecraft, I have to say. I've tried to make it as efficient as I can. So uh, let's just uh, stop this and I can clear it away using my mushroom egg. Um, which I kept there just so I can clear the board. So down here is my my redstone. There's not that much to it. <laughs> That's a bit of a long line. So we've just got one quickly here for adding live cells and removing live cells and clearing them all. It basically just, wherever you place your egg, it puts down a quartz block and uh, an area effect cloud called tile. Uh, and then if you are hovering over an emerald block, then it causes this block right here to pulse a little bit. So it's just sort of running these 10 times a second uh, and there's so basically what happens is when when you place down one of these um, let me just get F3B when you place down one of these you've got an area effect cloud here and when you um, oh, I shouldn't have done that when you hover over the emerald block what this does is um, first of all it works out how many neighbors it has so it executes 
in all eight directions as if it was in that spot to add one to area any area effect cloud in this area. So this one here will execute in this direction and add one to the life score of this uh, and it'll try and do the same in all of these directions. Uh, and this one here will uh, add one to to all of this. So this cell then has a score of one given it to, to it by this one. And this one here has a score of one given to it by this one over here. So they end up, they know they have one neighbor each. Um, if there was one here, then this one would get uh, a score of two because this one would execute on it and this one would execute on it. So that's how we work out how many neighbors the live cell has. And then for the dead cells, it does something very similar. So each of these area effect clouds summons a, um, I think I can show this by doing this and then there we go. So this is a stable relationship where they've all got exactly three neighbors, which is the perfect living conditions. You can see these uh, area effect clouds out here sort of flickering on and off. So what each of these cells is doing is they're summoning um, a, a, a test area effect cloud in all eight directions if there's a cold block there. So it doesn't test within this white area, within this white space. Um, if you have a situation like this, oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay, so this cell right here is actually getting four area effect clouds. This one here is putting one here, this one is putting one here, this one's putting one here, and so forth. So, and in fact, this one here is putting one here as well. So you can get up to eight. If we had this situation right here, we could get um, eight in this central square. <laughs> um, so to avoid the sort of excess armor stands, there's a very clever little trick which um, Spider Robot Man came up with, which I kind of want to use for my um, custom terrain later. And it basically, um, these lamps, by the way, mark different segments of the process. So what it does is it uh, executes on all check area effect clouds, which are the ones on the black squares, to tag the furthest area effect cloud from themselves with uh, within a radius of zero with a keep tag. And then it um, executes on those check um area effect cloud to add um, one to the life score of any nearby um, area effect cloud. So they, they then know how many neighbors they have. And then we kill any area effect cloud with the keep tag. And for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, but getting them all to execute on the furthest area effect cloud to themselves within zero blocks, it somehow leaves one behind, which is how we stop it over overpopulating. And the, whichever one we have left, if there's any left, then we simply set an actual area effect cloud tile there if the if the conditions are correct. So you can see my conditional checking on the very end here. So we've got um, one or less neighbor dies of underpopulation. So we can see here uh, if the area effect cloud has a life score of one or less, then it sets a coal block down there and then it uh, it kills itself. And then four or more neighbors dies from overcrowding. So we do the same thing if it's got a four or more. And it sets a coal block and, and kills itself. And then for the three live cells, very similar again. We set a quartz block um, and we summon the actual uh, tile area effect cloud and kill the test, uh, the check area effect cloud. It's pretty simple um, redstone, but I think it's uh, I think it works really well. You can download this from the description uh, if you want to play with it yourself. Um, so it's just a sheep egg to place tiles. A, uh, an endemite egg to delete the tile and you can clear all of the whoops that's a coal block all of the cells with a mushroom egg uh, I just kind of went for you know white for a cell black for deleting and red for delete everything so it's pretty neat I'll just show you one more uh, little contraption which I think is kind of cool see if I can build it okay let's give this a shot so this is called a gosper glider gun and it's a configuration which generates gliders and sends them off into space so you can see them collide in the middle and they generate I have I think I got it right yeah so they basically put gliders together and send them off into the world uh, and sort of bounce off these two sort of stable cell configurations on the end and these gliders will just keep going until they reach unloaded chunks it's pretty sweet I, I people have made crazy things you can um, you can YouTube search for game of life stuff somebody has built the game of life in the game of life like they've used the tiles to make big tiles that interact with each other in the same way that the game itself does and it's it's a really really cool thing <laughs> so uh you can download this world from the description uh check out adrian's version as well adrian brightmore because he does some pretty cool stuff check out his channel in general um 
and hopefully you'll find this kind of interesting and learn a little something from the redstone. Uh, you will need the 15 week 35e snapshot or above, so try and get the latest 1.9 version of Minecraft to run this. Um, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.